So you're going to want to keep your eyes out for an eagle. He's going to show up and miss his fish. In today's video, we're going to take a quick tour of Ketchikan, Alaska. So this picture has extremely high zoom, but you'll see an eagle in the top of the tree. And we're coming up here on an oyster farm and a kelp farm. They can't harvest wild kelp, it's protected, but uh, they can grow kelp and they grow oysters. Oysters aren't native, uh, they import uh, the young oysters and then they grow them underneath the docks and they make very large oysters. Here we're approaching the dock area where we'll get off of the ship and we'll start to explore uh, our destination for the day. I found some uh, carved wooden bears you'll see here in just a second that I thought were really cute. We're walking on a boardwalk going into the rainforest. I sped the clip up uh, about uh, three times as fast as normal. And you get a good idea of what it looks like as we're walking in, what um, uh, the trees look like and everything that's growing in there. The You have to travel on a boardwalk because underneath is muskage and it's basically moss growing over uh, holes and pools of water and so you can't go except on uh, the boardwalk. Again, uh, we're walking uh, into this forest a little bit farther. We're going to come up on a uh, tree and I'll let the uh, guide uh, tell you all about uh, this tree. He had a pretty interesting story about it. So, uh, remember when I said that last red cedar was a little bit bigger than what you'll see? Well, say hi to Chester. <laughs> That's what I call it. Um, this is 180 feet tall. It is 10 feet in diameter, and the rough estimate for age, we can't get an exact because cedar is too soft of a wood to drill in and do a ring test. The estimate is about 1,000 to 1,500 years old. So very old, very big, very impressive considering how long trees last around here. Uh, for size comparison, if you look at the branch growing off of it, that's bigger than the last red cedar that you just saw in every means. And for a proof of resilience, this tree fell on this tree uh, quite some time ago, and yet here it stands. Uh, it's become sort of a mega hive for life. You see that these vines, kind of these scraggly looking things are growing out of it. We've got some blueberry bushes growing out of the roots, and there's actually an entirely separate tree growing out of it in the back. You can see a little bit. So, very impressive. We like to show it off. And uh, this also has quite a bit of the history with the lodge here. Uh, Kirk, the owner, when he first got this area and he was building up the lodge, he was scouting out the land and he found the tree. And he said, well, that's a pretty cool tree. I want to show it off. So he went back to the lodge area and he said, hey guys, found this tree. Come check it out. And they're like, all right, Kirk, whatever. And so they came out here and they looked and they looked and they looked. And then sunset came and then they stopped looking and then they looked the next day and they couldn't find it again. Long story short. Uh, it was three years before they'd find this tree again. <laughs> now, before you say, Kirk, buddy, this is less distance to my 7-Eleven to get a big gulp. What up? Uh, it's a very dense forest. It's a very hard to navigate forest. I compare it to Mirkwood from Lord of the Rings. There, there. That's my comparison that I make. <laughs> he was he was biting at the bullet. Uh, but yeah, I so I, I think of it like Mirkwood. It's just very easily to get lost in here. Plus, your feet's always falling into random big holes that the muskeg is growing over. So you got to give him some slack. However, after that three years, he finally found the tree. I'm sure it was a very uh, humbling experience for him to be looking for a tree for three years. And he said, I have no way, absolutely not losing this thing again. So he tied a rope around it and just marched his way right back to the lodge because he wasn't going to lose it again. After we left the forest, it was time for our seafood feast. And as you'll see, uh, they just dumped it out of a bucket on the table and you ate with your hands. My wife was traveling with her wheelchair 
and so to make it easy for her to get up and down this uh, pretty steep ramp it moved quite a bit as the tide moved uh, they used uh, this golf cart to uh, help her get up and down which made life so much easier in just a second I'm gonna pan around and just get one more really good look at this area it was uh, absolutely stunningly beautiful we had a really enjoyable time here in Ketchikan uh, taking a look at uh, at nature and and getting an idea of what uh, it was like in, in the forest area I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you did enjoy, please go ahead and hit the like and the subscribe buttons. We've got a lot more videos coming up. You're really going to enjoy them. We'll see you next time.